Hi everyone, big thank you to the Jamstack conference team for having me here today. My name is Mary Chris Bonzo, and by day I am a developer advocate at Magic, and by night I am a pet mama, an indoor plant mama, and a green witch. I'm really into spirituality, and I'm also a multi passionate creative. And one of the things I'm building is a community called Blockchain Ladies Club. And our goal is to bring women trailblazers into the revolutionary space of Web3. I hope that by the end of my talk, you will be inspired to start viewing the S in Jamstack as security, but not just in the sense of securing users' personal information, but also securing their privacy so that they have control of their personal information and how it's used. Because with great plug and play Jamstack technologies that allow us to build apps quicker comes great responsibility. As we all know, Jamstack projects can vary from pure static sites to headless CMSs and web apps. I personally think that Jamstack is the most fun when it's used to build apps with full on CRUD and membership capabilities. This is because developers, indie hackers, or startups don't just want to build portfolio sites these days. They also want to build services that users can sign up for or subscribe to. And it's really cool that Jamstack allows us to achieve this and also deliver better experiences faster to our end users. Since we're wanting to build more interactive sites where end users are able to sign up or subscribe and engage with the website or service that we are going to build, this inevitably means that we'll be collecting their user information or data, which means that as a developer, we'll need to figure out how to authenticate users into the app and also how to protect their data. And I know all of this may sound trivial, but I want us to think a little bit deeper about these two points. Did you know that one of the biggest issues on the internet is protecting people's digital identities and data? The reason why can be best quoted by Kim Cameron author of The Laws of Identity, the internet was not built with an identity layer. Instead, it was designed to solve how machines can connect with one another using a local area network. So the internet was built without a way to know who and what you are connecting to. And sure, different identity models were built to solve this issue, and we'll cover a variety of them in a bit. But the first couple of solutions struggled to solve the root cause, and thus the internet was left with a proliferation of data and security breaches and deception. So this is why virtually every country has enacted some sort of data privacy laws to regulate how information is collected, how end users are informed, and what control end users have over their information. And as Jamstack developers, we know how much easier and quicker it is to build membership-based apps and services. And if we aren't mindful of the eroding trust on the internet, we're just going to keep building blindly. And in reality, for every membership-based app we build, we're also contributing to the state of trust on the internet, no matter how small our projects are right now. So today we're going to own the great responsibility of onboarding users onto the internet and learn how to do better. So we've decided to build a Jamstack oriented membership based app. Um, so let's think about the four different ways we can onboard users onto this app um, so that we are able to secure their data and also preserve their privacy. All right. One way is to build a centralized authentication solution from scratch. Say we're building a token-based authentication system using JSON web tokens or JWT in Express. So these are the steps 
that we'll need to take to build a full-fledged authentication system. And some of the benefits um, to choosing this route is that we have more flexibility over the onboarding flow of the users. Um, we control the user information and data. And um, if our goal was to become a backend developer, we can deepen our expertise in that um, realm. And the risks involved is um, because we're building it from scratch, we got to make sure that the open source libraries we choose has been battle tested and um, secure and has like um, sufficient support of developers um, helping out on it. And um, it's also a risk that we control um, users data because um, that means it's just a lot more responsibility to make sure it's protected against hackers. And, you know, as um, our company grows, we're also going to make sure that we nurture the authentication system. Or you can build a decentralized authentication system from scratch. Instead of a centralized or federated identity model where you register a digital identity with a tech oligarch, an org, or a government, um, therefore giving them control over the digital identity and data. Instead of all that, you have a decentralized identity model where users own their digital identity and are able to securely connect with others using public and private key cryptography. Okay, so I have never built a decentralized auth system from scratch, but from the book that I'm reading called Self-Sovereign Identity by Alex and Drummond, um, they provided the building blocks uh, required to um, get started. So here they are, and I'm not going to go into detail about every single one of them, but just know that these blocks are needed to, one, establish a secure connection between multiple parties without intermediaries like Google or Facebook. Two, um, it'll tell us how to digitally issue, hold, and verify protected data um, like verifiable credentials. And three, it'll tell us where and how to store users' public keys, which are needed to verify um, source, integrity, and validity of any data in a non-custodial way. So the benefits of um, choosing this, this option is because you're building it from scratch, you're gonna have flexibility again um, about the user onboarding flow. And what's cool is that user information and data will belong to the user. And um, if you are wanting to get into um, backend development in Web3, this is a great opportunity for you to do that. And it's also a new space to be experimenting in, so um, that's really fun. Um, the risks involved is because it's a new space, um, you know, everybody is just experimenting with a variety of solutions. Um, and one of the hardest problems um, that companies are trying to solve right now is how to do decentralized key management. Um, and another risk is as your company scales, you're also going to need to nurture this decentralized odd solution. So clearly we won't be building anything from scratch because we are Jamstack folks. So we can also outsource the auth work to centralized auth providers like um, Auth0 and Firebase Authentication. And with identity providers like um, Auth0 and Firebase, all we need to do is learn how to use their API or methods to build out the user onboarding flow. And uh, the benefits to choosing this route is it's really easy to get started um, because it's easy to get started and complete the auth um, portion of your app. You get to go to market even faster and um, depending on the developer experience, like um, it's cool when it's a plug and play auth authentication that you can use. So it makes um, it better to develop. And you're just pretty much offloading all of the auth issues to somebody else, which is great. And the risks involved is that you have less flexibility because you're not building it from scratch anymore. And the user information and data belong to the centralized auth provider. Lastly, because um, the centralized auth provider is holding all of this user information and data, they um, become a security liability. 
All right, so the last option we have is to outsource to a decentralized op provider. Um, and one example is the company that I work at called Magic. Magic is a developer SDK that enables plug and play passwordless authentication. And what makes Magic different from other centralized auth providers is instead of usernames and passwords, Magic uses blockchain-based public and private keys to authenticate users under the hood. So you can think of public and private keys as materially improved versions of usernames and passwords. So the public key is the identifier and the private key is the secret. And instead of being created by users and prone to human error, um, because you know sometimes we all choose weak um, or reuse passwords. So these uh, public and private key pairs are generated using elliptic curve cryptography, which is the algorithm used to secure the immense value sitting on mainstream blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. The key pairs are also privacy preserving um, because that there's no personally identifiable information on them and it's also exportable. This allows user identity to be portable and owned by users themselves. And this is actually called self-sovereignty in the Web3 space. So the steps involved in implementing auth with a decentralized auth provider, um, it would vary from company to company, but the main idea is that you implement the front end and then use the company's API to build out the user onboarding flow. And there's a lot of benefits. Um, it's easy to get started. You go to market faster. Um, and uh, depending on the company, they might offer plug and play auth. Um, definitely magic does. Uh, and you offload the authentication work. And then on top of that, there's no centralized authentication provider that is controlling the data. Um, and the user info and data pretty much belong to the user. And it's also a new space to experiment in. So if you decide to go with um, a decentralized auth provider, you can help shape uh, their the future of their product. Um, and it's also a great opportunity for you to understand what identity means in the Web3 space, which is um, really taking over the internet nowadays. And the risks involved is that there's less flexibility because you are outsourcing auth to somebody else. It's also a new space, so people are still experimenting with um, you know, how to figure out decentralized key management, as I have mentioned before. In summary, we have a variety of authentication solutions to choose from, and they each come with their own trade-offs. So um, I made a fun little chart um, that shows us, you know, the list of um, things we might want to consider when choosing um, either one of them. But to stick to the Jamstack topic, I'm going to focus on these last two options of choosing either a centralized auth provider or a decentralized auth provider for our Jamstack app. So when making the choice, here are a few questions to consider. Um, what is the developer experience when integrating with the auth solution? And similarly, what is the user experience that um, we'll be able to offer users? And what features uh, are available? Um, how much support can we expect from the company? And how much will it cost now versus in the future? And uh, what degree of privacy and security will users get? And then finally, um, will you be able to enable um, self-sovereignty such that the user identity is portable and owned by the users themselves? Obviously, the status quo is to only consider points one through five, but I encourage all of you to challenge the status quo by thinking more deeply about points six and seven, uh, privacy and self-sovereignty. How can we ensure that our apps are not only secure, but can also protect users' privacy and enable ownership of their digital identities? When you build your membership or subscription-based Jamstack app, just remember that onboarding users onto your app is more than just creating accounts. 
it's contributing to the future of trust on the internet. So no pressure or anything, but people's privacy and digital identities on the internet really rests in our hands. And one way to remember this is to think of the S in Jamstack as security or self-sovereignty. All right, that is it. Thank you everybody for um, watching my talk. If you ever wanna connect with me and talk about the future of identity or Web3, or community or spirituality, um, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. And my handle is at Seamcat. And that's it. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.